I don't call him anything. And I'm not going to engage in that kind of uh, uh, insult uh, fest that he seems to thrive on. Is that so? Let's journey back. I've kept count, and it seems like Hillary Clinton has insulted just about everybody. And by everyone, I mean white people, black people, Latinos, women, men, millennials, Bernie supporters, Trump supporters, Republicans, stay-at-home moms, gay people, Christians, and Gold Star families. So let's be very clear here. Telling young black people they are super predators is not rising above the insult fest. Not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. Telling white people we're to blame for the police assassinations by an angry black nationalist who wrongly believes he's targeted by police because of his skin color and believes cops are pigs who deserve to die, that is not rising above the insult fest. I'm going to be talking to white people. Uh, I think we're the ones who have to start listening right. to the legitimate cries that are coming from our African-American fellow citizens. Writing off the millions of Americans who plan to vote for Donald Trump, relegating us to the scourge of the earth, presuming the role of God, and telling us we're irredeemable, that is not rising above the insult fest. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you, you could, could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> Racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Calling Christians bigots, our beliefs outdated and wrong, and firmly, unequivocally stating that our philosophy on life, on family, on religion, on morals, and God must be changed, that is not rising above the insult fest. Laws have to be backed up with resources and political will, and deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. Telling Republicans we're racist just because we disagree with her radical, progressive, government knows best political policies is not rising above the insult fest. Many Republicans talk in coded racial language about takers and losers. They demonize President Obama and encourage the ugliest impulses of the paranoid fringe. Accusing Republicans of being terrorists because we believe science and reason and do not support the brutal dismemberment of babies inside their mother's wombs is not rising above the insult fest. Now, extreme views about women, we expect that from some of the terrorist groups. We expect that from people who don't want to live in the modern world. But it's a little hard to take coming from Republicans likening Republicans again to the terror-sponsoring, woman-brutalizing, gay-killing Iranian regime is not rising above the insult fest. In addition to the NRA, uh, the health insurance companies, the drug companies, um, the Iranians, um, <laughs> probably the Republicans. <laughs> Degrading stay-at-home moms as worthless and lazy, that is not rising above the insult fest. I suppose I could have stayed home and baked cookies and had teas, but I, what I decided to do was to fulfill my profession, which I entered before my husband was in public life. Calling the Secret Service agents a-holes and telling them to F off when they say hello, that is not rising above the insult fest. Dehumanizing millennials as products of a great recession and branding Bernie Sanders supporters as basement dwellers is not rising above the insult fest. Pandering to women by demonizing men, insinuating Latinos should think of you as their abuela, and implying the mother of an American killed in action was somehow not right in the head is not rising above the insult fest. But according to Hillary, she's the one taking the high road. So let's get this straight then. Donald Trump is the one engaging in an insult fest, accurately characterizing Hillary Clinton as crooked Hillary, given her law-breaking activity with her private, illicit, dangerous personal email server, her shady connection to the Clinton Foundation while she was Secretary of State, and her closed mouth, tight-lipped, lying when federal investigators tried to ferret out the truth. Is that crooked behavior? I think so. So Trump called her behavior what it was. 
But when Hillary Clinton rises above the fray, when she refuses to engage in a petty insult fest that brings down the collective quality of the political debate in our nation, she does so by hurling insults at every single demographic in our nation. Well, let's be very clear. Nothing says, vote for me, like insulting our intelligence, calling us names, and insinuating that we're too stupid to think for ourselves and choose a candidate that will keep our nation safe and our economy robust. We must just blindly follow behind you like a bunch of mindless sheep. And hey, if Hillary is looking for a new insult to use at the opening of her next rally, maybe she could use that one, because we'd have to be as stupid as a bunch of mindless sheep to fall for her proven pandering lies and vote for her. And that's my final point tonight. You can reach me on Twitter at Liz underscore Wheeler. I read all your tweets. And if you liked the show, please send me an email at OANN.com slash contact. Remember, we're coming to you prime time now at our brand new 9 p.m. Eastern time slot. And if you don't have cable, don't worry. We're available online at CloudTV.com. So catch Tipping Point tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. And have a good night.